it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make your space feel really high end this fall season with three super easy and budget friendly DIYs. Now, I know the haters are gonna say you can't elevate your space with a DIY, but let me tell you that you can, and these honestly really enhance the look of my space, made them feel a lot more designer and professional, so I'm excited to share how I did it with you all, and if you're looking for some fun fall decorating inspiration, I think you will find it in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the projects. All right, so for our first DIY, I was very inspired by these faux plum ramosa leaves that are sold on a floral, and these are all over the internet. Last year, I remember they sold out super quickly. They they are $20 a stem, which for me is just a little bit pricey for a fall stem, something that I'm only going to use seasonally. I have seen them all over my favorite influencers, Instagrams, and used throughout their homes. They look super designer and high-end, and they really remind me of Amber Interiors, how she uses a lot of those maroon and plum tones in her spaces, and I just love the subtle pop of color that it gives. But $20 a stem, I figured we could do better. So we're gonna recreate this look for a lot less and this is how I did it. Okay, so when it came to picking out a faux floral stem to start with for this project, I came across these faux china dollar stems at Michael's, and they were originally $5.99 each, but I used a 20% off coupon, so they were just under $5 each, and I bought four total. So to start, I used a craft sponge and some acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby in the shade Antique Maroon, and I also picked up the matte dark brown color to help give it a little bit of color variation. I will say the main color that I used was the antique maroon, but I would just mix in little dabs of the brown here and there to help the color seem a little bit more varied and lifelike. And so I just dipped my sponge in water for a smoother application and just started dabbing the paint on. For four stems, I needed two tubes of the antique maroon and one of the brown. And honestly, I was worried about this part being a little tedious with all of the leaves, but the sponge covered a lot of area and it actually went pretty quick. I also didn't worry about avoiding the stems at all because it was just easier to go back in and fix that later. I didn't go for the full, full coverage because with tiny bits of green showing through, I thought that it would give it more of a realistic look and kind of just like the leaves were naturally changing color. So once the fronts were nice and dry, I just flipped them over and did the exact same thing to the other side. So once both sides had dried, I noticed that they were looking super matte and that would be great if I was going for that dried floral look, but I really wanted them to have that lifelike waxy appearance. So I just went in with this crystal clear glaze and gave them a nice light spritzing of that. And it definitely did the trick to help restore some shine into the leaves. And next, I just wanted to go back in and add some brown to the stem. So I just used this chalk paint that I had on hand and I used the shades mineral and truffle and just kind of mix them together and then lightly brush them onto the main part of the stem and I didn't bother with going into the smaller stems at all just a simple light coat on the main center part and then once that was done I just wanted to bend the stems a bit to make them appear more realistic and the flat one-dimensional nature of these was super convenient for painting but now that that part was done I just wanted to give them a little bit more shape and variation so I first bent each stem in like a zigzag motion and then I went back in and did did an accordion fold on top of that, giving them that natural grown look. And these stems are super full, so you can totally fill a small to medium sized vase with just two stems like I did here. And I'm so happy with how these turned out and how similar they look to the designer A floral stems for a fraction of the cost. You can also style four stems for more of a statement on maybe a dining table, a kitchen island, or console table. I wanted to create a focal point here on my desk in our bay window, and I just love the subtle punch of plum color that gives my space an elevated designer feel for fall. All right, so for this next DIY, I only spent $4 total using items that I already had around the house. So very budget friendly and something that you can do to easily swap up the look and feel of your space for the fall season is just by switching out your artwork. And I'm personally very drawn to vintage inspired landscapes. And this is something that I see designers using all the time in their spaces because they have that really earthy feel to them, but they also have an abstract element. So they're very sophisticated and timeless. And I wanted 
wanted mine to feel very authentic and have kind of a framed canvas look to it and just have a fall inspired landscape. So someone I was very inspired by for this DIY was Emmy House of Seven Feathers on Instagram. I will link her Instagram in the description box, but she has a really great account. So I want to thank her for the inspiration for this. And I'm excited to show you all how we got this painting for under $5. Okay. So the first thing I did was search through my favorite Etsy shops to find a digital download to print. And these are only a couple of dollars to purchase and you can get them professionally printed or just print them at home. So lots of options. And this was the one that I decided to purchase. I just loved the movement of the brush strokes and that the overall scene was very fall like, but it still had some water and mountains off in the background. And it kind of reminded me of Lake Lure here in North Carolina. So to give it more of an authentic look, I decided to print mine on watercolor paper. And this was just a watercolor paper pad that I got from Walmart and I use it all the time. As you can see, this was my last piece, but when I'm putting this paper through the printer, I just make sure to trim a little bit off the edge so it fits. And I really like the texture that the watercolor paper has. It just helps give it more of an authentic look and almost like it's been painted onto a canvas. But as you can see, it does feel very printed and one dimensional. So I just wanted to take it a step further with the authenticity and try painting some Mod Podge over the top to resemble some textured oil paint. And when painting this on, I just tried to match with the brush strokes that were in the image. So the sky was a lot more flat and spread out while the trees were more globby with texture and short strokes. So I just made sure to lay the globs on relatively thick to really give it that three dimensional effect. The only downside to doing this on watercolor paper is that some of the ink ran and it made my image a lot more pigmented and red looking. So you could always try printing it at CVS or something, maybe on a glossier paper, and that might help avoid some of that. I haven't actually tried that out, but I would assume because this was just straight out of our home printer that it just picked up some of that ink and spread it around. But overall, I was really happy with how this turned out. And just by taking five minutes to add some Mod Podge, it really help transform the look of the entire painting. So next I decided to use this frame that I already had on hand. It was a home goods find. It was only $10. And because I wanted this to have a framed canvas look, I just removed the glass and then set our print inside. Super easy. And it totally looks like an authentic hand painted framed canvas. And there are so many places where you could add these into your space to help enhance your fall decor. You could always use it as an accent piece in a bathroom or my personal favorite. You could pop it on a little picture easel to help create more of a statement on somewhere like a console table, or you could just use it propped up against a wall in shelf styling or against a kitchen backsplash just to help layer those autumn colors into your space. All right, so for this next DIY, I wanted to try my hand at making my own faux tree. And this is something I've seen lots of bloggers and designers do. So I will link some other tutorials in the description box for more inspiration if you are thinking you wanna try this yourself. I personally was very inspired by Amber Interiors. She has lots of tall, twiggy, red and burgundy fall trees in her space for the autumn season. And I thought it would just be such a fun thing to incorporate. There are very expensive fall trees on the market. They are usually $300 and up and they're not even super tall. I think one is like seven and a half feet, but I wanted to make mine really tall and get that designer look for not $300. So I'm excited to show you all how I did it. Okay, so for my tree, I just kept my eye out for a large branch and one day after a bad storm, I was lucky enough to find this one that fell off a tree near the sidewalk in my neighborhood. So I just brought it back to my house and I probably look like a crazy lady with this huge tree branch in my car, but I was just happy it fit in there. So since this branch had just fallen off of the tree, I needed to de-leaf it. So I just took some wire cutters and snipped off all of the little twiggy branches that had leaves on them. And when I picked up my branch, I was really careful about inspecting it for any bugs living inside but just to be sure I put some bleach in a little spray bottle and I sprayed the whole thing down with it to kill anything living that could be left on there just because I'm putting this in my home and I want to be sure that it's safe to bring inside. 
I also just asked my husband to trim off one of the bigger limbs with his multi-tool because I wanted the trunk of my tree just to be one skinny branch, but this just kind of comes down to personal preference and what branch you're able to find, and this was just me being really picky about the shape. Now it was time to set it in concrete, and I have this little planter container laying around from a plant that we had bought for our yard, so I just taped up the hole with duct tape and decided to use this because it was free and the perfect size. And to set my tree, I had this rapid set mortar mix left over from my DIY concrete base and it was really easy to work with so all you do is add water and I just followed the ratio instructions on the box. I will say for this project I feel like it's important to get a rapid set mix so that the mortar dries super quickly so you don't have to brace your tree or hold it there for very long while the mix dries. So here you really have to make sure you get all of the mix down at the bottom and stir until it's similar to a thick milkshake in consistency and I will say that I probably should have started out with more mix here so that it filled most of the container for a sturdier base but I was a little off on my measurements oh well <laughs> So I just stuck the base of my branch in the container and made sure that I pushed the mix up against the branch so that there was no gaps. And I had to hold the tree there for about 10 minutes or so until the mortar mix had dried enough to allow the tree to stand on its own. So once everything was dried and set, I just took my tree inside because there was still a bunch of little twigs that needed some pruning. And I wanted this to resemble a tree trunk more than a twiggy branch. So I just went in with some wire cutters and snipped off some of the lower hanging branches. Now, my original plan for the leaves was just to paint some cheap stems like in our first DIY, but I came across these faux leaf bushes at Michael's and I thought that they were absolutely perfect. I just loved the rusty color on them and how realistic they looked. And the best part was that you could pull the tape off and the bush was full of just a bunch of individually wired stems, which was perfect for adding onto the tree. But if you were dealing with another kind of stem though, you could always just use a wire stripper on the stem. So as far as attaching them onto the tree, I've seen a lot of people drill holes and glue their stems into the holes, but all I did was just simply wrap the wire around my tree branches. And the reason I decided to do this was because after all that work on my tree trunk, I just wanted to be able to use it during the spring and summer also and I figured this would be a lot easier to swap out for green stems later on and my tree branch was probably too small to drill holes into anyways so I just went around and added the faux stems all over the tree and for this one I used about 10 stems total but you could totally use more or less than that depending on your personal preference I just wanted my tree to be a little bit more on the sparser side because I wanted to capture that authentic autumn look where about half of the leaves were still left on the tree and I will say overall, I was really happy with the wire wrapping technique. I just made sure to be careful not to snap any of the branches while I was wrapping. And they kind of just ended up looking like vines. And as much as I love the red stems, I like that I have the flexibility to change them up later on. So to prep my decorative planner, I just added a bunch of towels and bubble packaging so the tree fit in there nice and snug. And I just placed it right in there. I do have a video on how to DIY rustic decorative planters, which I will link below if you're interested. But but I was so happy with the height and scale of this and how it instantly made such a statement in our living space. And just to finish it off, I cut out some leftover packaging that I had into a circle with a hole for the trunk and placed that on top. And then I just went in with some cheap sheet moss that I got from Walmart and layered that on the surface for a more natural, authentic look. And that is really it. I am obsessed with how this tree came out. I just cannot get over how realistic and expensive it looks. The rusty color of the leaves just makes such a statement in our living space for fall and the scale and height of it makes it feel very expensive and designer as well. And not to mention that making this didn't even cost a third of the price of the expensive faux designer ones. So definitely worth the work on this and I'm so excited to reuse it for other seasons as well. All right, everyone, that about wraps up this video. I hope that you felt inspired by some of these fall DIYs. If you are planning to do one or had a favorite, definitely leave me a comment below and let me know. I love hearing from you all and definitely thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe so you see more DIY and home decor content from me and you don't miss any more of it. And I just wanna say thank you so much to all of you for watching this video and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.